liberating. Uh, thank you for your support of me and my joblessness. Okay. Um, welcome. Tonight, it's a special collaboration between Soul Players and Stand Up Soul. Woo hoo! Movies in 10! Yay! Uh, uh, how many of you know what's happening tonight? <laughs> Okay, great. How many of you don't know what's happening tonight? You're just like, I'm going to a bar. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, tonight uh, we have six or seven performers who are going to uh, perform uh, one person reenactment of f famous movies out there. So there, And it'll be in about ten minutes, so that's why it's called Movies in Ten. Uh, if you were wondering about that. Dude, this guy gets it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's what it's going to be. Uh, one person doing uh, one of their favorite movies. Uh, how, does that sound... Is that reasonable? Yeah. Okay, you guys are... Seem, you seem friendly. Yeah? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, we're all very friendly. Okay, good. Uh, okay. Uh, any questions? Any questions? No? Great. Uh, if you want to buy snacks, there's some snacks behind the pillar. Uh, so you guys can go get some snacks. Snacks. Uh, they're delicious snacks. Uh, I don't know why I say snacks like that every time. It's just how I say it. Uh, so buy snacks. There's uh, Twinkies and Pop Tarts and Kudos and all kinds of Snickers and M&Ms and snacks. Okay. Uh, so buy those. Proceeds go to Soul Players. They're their spring season. Uh, you guys are chatty. Sorry, that's my bad. Quiet down. All right, now that everyone's in a good mood, uh, I'm going to introduce the first act of the evening. Are you guys ready for the first act? She's, in, she's standing right in front. She's totally ready. Uh, she will be uh, performing Ghostbusters 2. Yeah. Ghostbusters 2. She ain't afraid of no ghosts. Everybody, put your hands together for Greta Wink. the world is going to end on New Year's Eve. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have. Till next time, I'm Peter Vagman saying... <laughs> oh, you're doing very good work here, Dana. Uh, can I take you out to lunch today? Uh, oh, no, I have an appointment. Actually, uh, oh, I, I shouldn't be going. Oh. I think she likes me. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I didn't imagine it. Uh, I, I'd like to bring Ray into this one, Dana, if that's all right with you. All right, but not Vankin. Uh, I know I'm just.
just asking you to hurt again, but I want to give it another shot. All right, lay the baby down. Subject is approximately 24 inches in height. Uh, about 18 pounds and eight months old. Caucasian white male. <clears throat> Let's see. Appears to be ticklish. <laughs> Right here. Oh, things are going bananas here, guys. We've really hit the honeypot. There's all of this action on under the streets. more food on your shirt. 
than we did in your mouth, Oscar. Yes. Ah! 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 <laughs> oh, uh, hey, Ray. Dana's here. Her bath truck tried to eat her. <laughs> so, did you find anything in Dana's apartment? No. But we did dig up a bunch of interesting things on that Vigo character you mentioned. All right, Vigo. Uh, born 1505, died 1610. He didn't die of old age either. He was shot, stabbed, poisoned, skewered, stretched, burned, and drawn and quartered. His last words were, I will be back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they didn't find out of the apartment. What are we supposed to do? Oh, well, I'll get dressed and I'll take you out to dinner. I got a babysitter and everything. <laughs> I usually wear glasses, so I forgot about that. <clears throat> I got a babysitter and everything. Oh, uh, Janine, would you like to maybe go get some dinner with me? Oh, I'd love to, but I promised Dr. Bankman I'd babysit. Unless you want to babysit with me. Alright, so the next part goes a little, a little slow, so I'm going to do it as fast as I can. Not that the movie's slow, it'd just be very slow if I tried to act everything out. So, Slimer's not in it. Um, so, Spangler and Stance and Winston go down to the tunnels, and Dana and Venkman go out to dinner and talk about their relationship or something. Uh, Spangler and Stance and Winston find that the river slime is surging, and Winston falls into it after he gets hit by a ghost train, but he's fine, and they float along, and when they come up out of the manhole, they start to fight, and they're just yelling at each other, and they realize, hurry, take off your clothes! So they strip down to these comically ridiculous long underwear, because it's December there, and um, they realize that the slime is making them the worst possible people. And it's all leading straight to the museum, and it's affecting everyone in New York, which is why everyone in New York is so mean to each other. <laughs> um, there's Vigo. It's going to be, oh no! And Louis is teaching, uh, Janine is teaching Louis how to babysit. So that's how you babysit. I was a babysitter once. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Spangler stance and Winston, they go and they interrupt Venus dinner and they start to make such a big scene with all the slime that they get arrested and the mayor hates them because of the stuff that happened in the first movie, which was much better. Um, so they get sent to a mental institution. Meanwhile, oh, uh, oh, oh, Dana, oh, we were just, uh, how is your date? Oh, Peter got arrested. Typical. I'm just gonna go check on the baby. Bring me the child! So that I may live again. Um, if I bring you the child, can I have the woman? Yes. <laughs> oh no! Oscar! Something decent. 
Winston has had two lines, I'm sorry. <laughs> Something pure! Da, da, da. All right, <clears throat> speakers go. Uh, squirt things go. <laughs> With the positively charged slime, positively charged. All right. <laughs> All right, New York, we got a special request out of Liberty Island. Slimers in the movie. <clears throat> oh, it's almost happening, Dana. It's almost time. At midnight, New York will be mine. And Vigos, mostly Vigos, <laughs> marry me. I'd rather not. Oh, it's happening. Uh, yeah. Someone to shout out a movie they, they'd like to see. Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes Back. You know, I. The Goonies. The Goonies. Okay. Okay. Goonies. We're gonna go. Stop it. Uh, okay. Empire Strikes Back. Goonies or Titanic? Which one? Goonies. Goonies. I totally hear Goonies. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Here's Goonies. Here's Goonies in one minute. Okay. Goonies in a minute. Somebody yell that. shoot down a magical slide underground, right? And uh, then there's a guy with one eye. Sloth! Chalk! Baby Ruth? Oh my gosh, there's pirates now! Good! Uh, Goonies never say die! Woo! And now we're rich. We found a bunch of gold. Um, that's the end, right? <laughs> I think that was the end. That was good. Good. Never say that. Uh, so.
that was that was good. I think that was that was pretty accurate, right? I think. Uh, filmed in my home state of Oregon. Right on. Yeah. Nice. Jamie likes Oregon. Yeah. The story. Uh, clicker. Guitar. Sound check. Sound checking. Uh, okay. So. Uh, okay, yeah, don't forget to buy snacks, buy snacks, because the spring season uh, has a couple great plays for soul players. Soul players, spring season, very good. They got Top Girls and Glen Gary Glen Ross going on, and, uh, so you guys need to check that out soon. We'll mention that a few times throughout the night. Uh, and, uh, let's see, Stand Up Soul, Jeff and I and some other friends, we are a part of Stand Up Soul. We had a show last night, it went well, we have a monthly show. First Thursday of every month here. We're bringing a professional comedian into town next month, Ben Cronberg. He was here before, he's coming back, very funny guy. And tomorrow we're doing a show in Busan, so if you're in Busan, come to that. Uh, no? No, yeah, probably not. Tell your Busan friends. Uh, and, uh, so, yeah. Anybody else have some announcements? Where in Busan? HQ Guarna. The, the new HQ Bar in Guadalupe. Uh, this place. My friend John knows it. Uh, give it up for Swing Jet at the bar! Yay! Give it up for our tip! Yay! Uh, they, ex they accept tips, so you should give them extra money if you feel that their prices are too low. So that's a, that's a nice thing that you do at bars. You know, now's the time. We're good? All right. Okay, no, this is what you've been waiting for. Uh, all right, everybody, I'm going to introduce the next act. Uh, he's my friend. I know him decently. Uh, he is performing uh, one of the best movies, best sequels of all time, Eddie and the Cruisers 2. Spoiler alert, Eddie lives. Uh, everybody, put your hands together for Jeff Sinclair! First of all, please, guys, if everyone can keep it down, I don't, please, we all know the movie, please don't yell out the lines, that's my job, Eddie lives. all right, we know Eddie lives, all right, Let's just keep the lines to yourself, just move your lips along with the lines, we all know it, we all grew up with it, right, so, all right, here we go. Uh, let me set my timer, because I'm going to try to stay within 10 minutes, which means I might have to go fast at some points. Yeah, I know, I know, but I don't want to rush. We want some of those classic scenes, right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. The dark side's coming, nothing's real. She never knows just how I feel. She makes me feel so mean. Nothing's gonna stop my love that's blind. Take it to the dark side, cross that line. On the dark side, oh yeah. On the dark side, oh yeah. Oh, there we go. You're Eddie Wilson, you can do this. Alright, go for it. Uh, hi, this is Tracy for KBS News. Uh, as you know, we just played The Dark Side by Eddie Wilson now. As you know, in the 1960s, Eddie Wilson was it. And then suddenly, on a March cold day, Eddie Wilson died when his car veered off a bridge into the cold, brackish waters of Michigan. And although his body was never recovered, he's clearly dead. We're gonna go live now to Satin Records, who is currently holding an Eddie Wilson look-alike contest. Roll it, Troy. Hey, you go! 
guys all love quitting. Eddie Wilson, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, as president of Satin Records, I got a big announcement for you. We have just secured the rights to the unreleased Eddie Wilson album. That's right. Now listen, we're going to release this baby track by track tonight for you to hear all of them. You guys love Eddie Wilson, right? Yeah! That's right. And I want you guys to know, Eddie Wilson was here today, alive, 20 years later. He'd probably be watching this right now, going, this is what I want, Lou. This is what I want. The fuck is this shit? What is this? I don't want this goddamn record producers. Can't believe it. Um, you have such an amazing face. I really want to paint you. Hi, my name's Diane. And I saw you from across the bar. And your face, there's so much mystery. It's like you're hiding something behind that mustache. I want to paint you. What's your name? The name's Joe West. And uh... Hey, you don't want to paint this mug, right? This mug ain't nothing special. It's not like I used to be a rock star or nothing. Right? You don't, you don't need to pay this. Well, what's that? Okay, yeah. Okay, I'll take your card. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can't wait to tell the guys at the construction company about this. Uh, all right, well, uh, yeah, you... I'd walk you out, but, you know, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to watch the next band, okay? So, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll give you a call, all right? Guitar player, you should learn to play yourself. <laughs> Who the hell are you, man? Coming up here watching my band telling me how to play guitar, right? Hey, 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 I got a I got a great idea. This is gonna be hilarious. Hey, why don't you get up there, play a song for us, Mr. Guitar? Yeah. 
Yeah, I can't wait. Oh, oh, you're gonna do it? Oh, this is great. Here, here, play with my axe, man. Play with my axe. Oh, man, this is gonna be great. This is going to be hilarious. <laughs> this guy's got the goods. Whoa, man, that was amazing! It was amazing, man. You gotta join my band, man. You gotta join my band. I ain't interested in no band, man. I don't know nothing about no band. Listen, music's gotta breathe, man. One time I was in the desert. <laughs> Oh man, come on, I promise you, come on, you gotta join the band, huh? What do you say? Are we on? Okay, alright, thanks man, thank you. Hey Chuck, it's Lou, huh? President of Set Records. Listen, guess what we found in the tapes? We found a whole hidden album that the whole world doesn't know about. It's the mystery album. This is what I'm thinking. What if we start rumors that Eddie Wilson didn't die? We even offer a reward, $300,000 that anyone that can prove Eddie Wilson's still alive. Then we release each single as a separate album. We're gonna make millions. <laughs> oh, money. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. You're not playing hard. Quit. You're lagging, man. Come on. What's going on? Oh, Charlie. Charlie, come on. I thought we stopped doing this last week. Oh, guys, that's it. Stop. Stop. This is too much. Guys, listen. I was in the desert one time. And I heard things out there. It's just sad, you know? Cactus. Real sharp, right? That's what this music's gotta be, man. It's gotta be like a stone skipping across a pond. All right? Or else, I'm a whoop. Whoa, what's that? Hey, Rick, don't give me that look. <laughs> Talking about, man. Hey, man, I just rocked on that last song. You know what? Maybe my band don't need you, all right? Maybe you should just go, huh? What, what, hey, no, no, don't go. Don't go. No, I totally need... Oh, fuck, it's gone. Eddie, what's the matter with you tonight? Eddie, something's bothering you, you need to tell me. I mean, is it the new band you're in? You gotta give those guys a chance. You can't be too hard on them, Eddie. Eddie, no, Eddie, calm, Eddie, calm down. <sighs> you don't know, Diane. You don't know. What don't I know, Eddie? You don't know! <laughs> 20 years ago, I was in a band. <laughs> what are you 
talking about? You're in a band. You're in a band? Big deal, Eddie. Everybody's been in a band. Okay, Eddie, what's your problem? You don't understand, Diane. I gave my heart and soul to an album, and then we gave it to the record company. And all they did was crush my dreams. They told me it was no good. It was no good to them till I died, Diane. That's right, till I died. What band are you in, Eddie? <laughs> God damn it, Diane, you're gonna make me say it. <laughs> the Cruisers. Eddie and the Cruisers. You're crazy, I mean, come on, Eddie Wilson never even had a mustache. I'm Eddie Wilson. My name is Rick Diesel. I'm writing you today to tell you that the lead singer of my band is a lot like Eddie Wilson, except he's got a mustache. And Eddie Wilson's dead. I'm including the tape. He just returned to our band and we're really hot. I'm headed to the practice space right now, but we got an up and coming show. So please, turn out. Sincerely, Rick Diesel. Diesel. <laughs> yeah, guys. Yeah, you're kicking. All right. We're going to do awesome with this show, guys. All right. All right. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Boys. Boys. This is too much. All right. Oh, I love music again. God bless Diane. God bless her. <sighs> Alright guys, big show! We got our first big show this time, guys! Alright, let's do this! Alright, you ready, Quinn? <laughs> hey, Charlie, you sexy animal! Alright, we're ready to do this!
All right, guys. I had a change of heart. Let's go out there. Let's kick some ass. Yeah. Let's go. Run through the fire, baby. It's gonna get hot. Run through the fire, baby. We're gonna get hot. Run through the fire, baby. Tell me it's burning. Fly up, baby. You're gonna get burned. Over here on bass, Quinn Quigley. Rick Diesel. And me. I'm Betty Wilson. The Princess Bride. Yeah. Yeah, be good. Uh, put your hands together for Mr. Christopher Zaze. I uh, my video card. I, I got my card. Can I get a copy? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's actually Christopher Zaze, but that's okay. Nobody gets to it. I unfortunately, it's just going to be me up here. I got no PowerPoint, I got no music. We're just going to have to fly. Mm. Yeah, Take it, take it. When I was your age, television was called books. And this is a special book. Does it have any sports in it? Are you kidding? Fencing, fighting, torture, revenge, giants, monsters, chases, escapes, true love, miracles. Doesn't sound too bad. I'll, I'll try to stay right. Oh, well, thank you very much. Your, your vote of confidence is very overwhelming. <laughs> Princess Bride by S. Morgan Stern. Oh, boy. Fill this with water, please. <laughs> As you wish. That day, she was amazed to discover that when he was saying, As you wish, what he meant was, I love you. <laughs> but what if something happens to you? This is true. Do you think this happens every day? My people, the Princess Buttercup! My lady, we are but poor circus performers. Is there a village nearby? There is nothing nearby. Not for miles. Then there will be no one to hear you scream. I just don't think it's right killing an innocent girl. Am I going mad? What did the word think escape your lips? You are not hired for your brains, you hippopotamic landmass. Do you want to go back to where I can't found you? Unemployed? In Greenland? Pezzy, <laughs> are the rocks ahead? If they are, we will be dead. No more rhymes, I mean it. Anybody want a peanut? <laughs> ah! <laughs> you, you sure know what they us. As I told you, it would be utterly, completely, and totally inconceivable. Out of curiosity, why do you ask? I just looked behind us and uh, something was dead. <laughs> you hear that sound? That's the sound of the shrieking eel. She doesn't die this time. I'm just telling you because you all look nervous. <laughs> Whoever he is, he's too late. Look, the cliffs of insanity. <laughs> <laughs> supposed to be this colossus. You were supposed to be this legendary thing, and yet he gains. He didn't fall. Inconceivable. You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. I, uh, I don't suppose 
you going to speed things up? Look, if you're in such a hurry, perhaps you could lower a rope or a tree branch or find something useful to do. For the soul of my father, to be the you will reach the top of line. I will go up to the six finger man and say, Hello, my name is Nigo Montoya. You killed my father. That's it! You expect me to attack with Capofero? Naturally, but I find the two on attack, sir, Capofero, don't you? Unless the enemy has studied a creeper, which I have. I know something you do not know. What is that? I'm not left handed! I know something you don't know. What is that? I'm not left handed either. I did that on purpose! I did not have to miss! I apologize for my Andre the Giant. I believe you. In the meantime, sleep well and drill large bed. You're no match for my strength! And I'm no match for your brains, no! You're an, I'm no match for your strength, and you're no match for my brains! You've heard of Aristotle, Socrates, Plato? Morons! What you do not expect is Iocane power. It is odorless and dissolves in liquid. Of course. Where is the poison? The game of wits has begun. It ends when one of the streets and finds out who is right and who is dead. Australia is entirely peopled by criminals! As everyone knows. <laughs> and Iocane comes from Australia, and no one can trust criminals. And as you are not trusted by men, I clearly cannot drink the wine in front of you. Truly, you have a wow, dizzy wow. intellect. Wait till I get going! Wait, what in the world is that? <laughs> you fool! You fell for the most classic blunders! The most famous of which is never get involved in a land war in Asia! <laughs> Second of that is this, never get in the line with a Sicilian when death is on the line! <laughs> you would love more deeply than a killer like you could ever dream. You only said, please, please, I need to live, because please, I cut my hand. When I asked him what was so important for me, true love, he said. Love is pain, your highness! Anybody who says anything else is selling something. You mocked me again. Never mocked me again. I died that day. And you can die too for all I care. As you wish. Oh, Mr. Wesley. Why didn't you wait for me? Well, you were dead. Death can also be true. It can only delay to me. They're kissing again. Do we have to listen to the kissing part? All right, you shake all you. Where was I? Ah, yes. Come, we'll escape in the fire swamp. We'll never survive. Oh, you're only saying that because no one ever has. Uh -huh. <laughs> I myself am often surprised by life's little quirks. Good night, Wesley. Sleep well. Good work. I'll most likely kill you in the morning. And now that we're together, I shall retire and hand the name over to someone else. Is everything clear to you? Kinda. Wesley, what about the RUSs? Lots of unusual size. <laughs> I don't believe they exist. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> surrender! Ah, you wish to surrender to me? I accept. Wait! Will you promise not to hurt him? What was that? What was that? You have six fingers on your hand. If someone was looking for you. Where am I? Don't even take a trap trying to escape. You must be very brave. But nobody understands the machine. I suggest a deal. You write four copies of a letter. I'll send my four fastest ships, one in each direction. Are you coming down to the pit? Wesley's got his strength back. Tyrone, I've got the country's 500th anniversary to plan. My wedding to arrange, my wife to murder, and Gilda to bring for it. I'm swamped. Try to rest. If you don't have your health, what do you have? Former brute squad! 
How will the thieves' forest empty it out? It won't be easy, sire. Try ruling the world sometime. Where is this Rugen now? So I may kill him. He's in a castle guarded by 30 men. I need the man in black. Let's go. But we don't know where he is. Don't bother me with trifles. After 20 years, my father's death shall be avenged. There will be blood tonight. Yeah. You never sent the ships. Doesn't matter. Wesley will come for me anyway. You are nothing but a coward with a heart full of fear. I'm sorry. I would not say such things if I were you. I think no man in a century will suffer as greatly as you will. Not to fifty! Ah! Ah! Father, please, I need you. Guide up my sword. Oh. He's dead. Grandpa, Grandpa, what do you mean he's dead? Calm down. Uh, maybe I'll read it to you, Shama, at the time. No, no, no! Tell me what happens. Who gets Humper Dick? No one. He lives. He lives? Jesus, Grandpa! What'd you read me this for? Hey, are you the miracle match who worked for the king all those years? Thank you so much for bringing up such a painful subject. And while you're at it, why don't you give me a nice paper cup and pour lemon juice in it? We're closed! Eh, uh, you got money? 65. Sheesh, I never worked for so little. Hey, 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 think, look who knows what he's saying. It just so happens that your friend is mostly dead. Hey, what's so important, huh? What you got here that's worth living for? <laughs> there you go, there is no noble cause. Ah, he distinctly said to blade, which means to bluff. Liar, liar! Don't say another word, darling. Come on, come on, come on, Shh! Wait, 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 wait. I make it better, Hopper Dick suffers? Humiliations galore. <gasps> now that's a noble cause! Ha <laughs> ha! Let's get to work! Hooray! <laughs> it's chocolate coated, so make sure he doesn't go swimming for uh, about an hour. <laughs> bye bye, boys! Have fun stopping the castle! Do you think they'll win? It'll take a miracle. <laughs> Who are you? Are we enemies? Where's Buttercup? Let me explain. Uh, no, there's no time. Let me sum up. Buttercup is marrying Hopper Dick in less than an hour, so all I have to do is get in, break up the wedding, steal the princess, make her escape after I kick out Rugen. Marriage! <laughs> Marriage! Is what brings us here! Together! <laughs> Today! <laughs> Give us the cake key. I have no cake key. There's the key. Oh, you mean this the cake key. Men and wife! Say men and wife! Mom! Mom! Wife! Hello. My name is Nego Huntley. You killed my father. Prepare to die. You must be that little Spanish brat who taught a lesson to you all those years ago. Simply incredible. Have you been chasing me all this time, only to fail now? I think that's the worst thing I ever heard. You know, there's a shortage of perfect breasts in the world. It would be a pity to damage yours. <gasps> My sweet Wesley! Oh! Gently, gently, gently! <laughs> Hello. My name is Anigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Hello! My name is Anigo Montoya! You killed my father! Prepare to die! Offer me money! Yes! Power tool, offer me that! Anything you want and more! I want my father back, you son of a bitch! Yeah. I got married. I didn't want to. Never happened. Did you say I did? Uh, no, we sort of skipped that part. Then you were married. If you didn't say it, you didn't do it! To the death! No to the pain! I think you've got that wrong. I think you're bluffing. It's possible, pig. It's conceivable, you miserable, vomitous mass. Then again? Perhaps I have the strength after all. Drop your sword. I knew it! I knew it! I knew he was bluffing! I knew he was 
bluffing. Here we go. I saw the prison's stable and there were four white horses. And I thought, there are four of us if we find a lady. Hello, lady! <laughs> you know, I've been in the revenge business so long, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself now. Have you ever considered piracy? It'd make a wonderful Dread Pirate Roberts. They rode to freedom. A wave of love swept over them. And as they reached for each other, no, it's kissing again. You don't want to hear that. I don't mind so much. Since the invention of the kiss, there have been five kisses that were rated the most passionate, the most pure. This one left them all behind. Yeah. Yeah. The end. Maybe you can come over and read it again to me tomorrow. As you wish.
in several Japanese cities, and mass suicides at six anime conventions in the United States. Oh, God. Well, I guess I should keep you American. That's what I know, after all. Hi, honey. I love you. Aw, you're the best! No, you're the best. You sound tired, Jamie. Why don't you take a nap, and when you get up, I'll order a pizza for you. <laughs> Extra cheese? Pepperoni? Aw, you know me so well! Yes, so very well. <laughs> Sleep now, darling. Sleep. <laughs>
His name is Biff, he's fucking human. Yeah, uh, we probably reeks like weak, so beef. Anyway, Marty, he takes no guff. It gets him in trouble. He's clever, not tough. Marty's a pinhead, it's the name of his band. Plays guitar and sings as the band's front band. No original songs, just Huey Lewis covers. Really wants to play for a room full of lovers at that high school dance. Auditions for a chance, gets turned down. But the story's not over. That night, Marty gets a call from Doc. Who wants to show Marty something cool he's got? At fucking one in the morning, that's a kind of a warning, but Marty takes stop to see what knocks so hot. Twin, fine and small, let's set the scene. It's 115, silent, serene. Doc Brown can be found hanging round a futuristic thing. Doc turns to Marty and he tells his bro, yo, I built a time machine. Like Iron Man Dick, this thing is sick. It's sliver, it's sleek, it's quarantine. A badass motherfucker, it belongs on the cover of Badass Path. When he pushes up a path, his teenage daddy peeping time gets hit by a car that was meant for his father and would up in the lap of his mom, his hard ass mom. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Confused teenager says, Oh no, motherfucker! <laughs> She's taking the trouble and also his pants taken when he wasn't consciously there. Turns out his mother's a whore, and she wants to see more than his fucking purple underwear. Marty changed the past, uh-oh. Turned himself into a human pothole. Gotta find a way to get his parents to fuck. Marty McFly was the end of his luck. Gotta enlist the scientists and say risks. Are there reasons that he's going through this? The answer is simple, but it's bad news. The time machine is busted. It's running out of juice. A lightning bolt's the only way, son. Divine gigawatts 1.21. Plus a flux capacitor makes it go faster. But without the bolt from above, you know? Luckily, Marty's got a fly with a plan. It reveals from the town clock to serve by lightning. All they gotta do is get some cables and wire. And lock it to the clock to catch some medley fire. Should be enough. But basically, stuff. But in the time. It was for prior. Back to the future, motherfucker. Part two, let's do it again. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Give you a chance to get back in the groove, right? Yeah. Meanwhile, to harass. Marty's poor folks don't get a pass. Uh -huh. <laughs> Forcing George McFly to help him cheat and lie. The cops are ready to torture them to help him comply. And Marty Lorraine can't escape the pain. Bit on her without any shame. Out in the open, openly broken. Any heroes to help her? No pen. It's pretty easy to see the best disease is hungry. For one thing, R A P E, do the evil motherfucker. <laughs> so while Doc defaces public property, Marty tries to plan to get his folks to conceal, take his mom to the dance and try to get in their pants, and this will fill her with rage, supposedly.
quickly. Like this, Auntie does not remember that his mom tried to sneak a peek at his member. That his mother, don't be aware, he doesn't get weird because at this point this shows up like an angry bear. His goons hold Marty while he jumps in the fields. I'm gonna get poor Lorraine hung to heal. But then George shows up. It was part of the plan, was to play hero man. But that's when Marty was the villain. A bird that Biff has now taken to villain. Biff's bigger and stronger and meaner and mad. And at first he shames and mocks Marty's death. But this is the moment that George has always waited for. To get him searching where his courage is seated. He found it that night, cocked his arm and swung his fist. It was the power of love that fucking shut down Biff. <laughs> Mysterious thing, motherfucker. Like a bit weak. Like a George C. Marty's parents are together at last. It's crazy, but Marty still ghosted like Patrick Swayze. Stay the way. Doesn't look like his thing. He's gotta act fast. Ain't no time to be lazy. The only way to be sure that this be big time men fucking poor are gonna drop their goddamn drawers. You gotta give them bitches to kiss. Plot contrivance 54. Marty ends up on a stage once more. Part of the band, guitar in his hand. The dance he's been wanting to play songs for. He rocks them soft, he rocks them strong. He rocks until his folks are guaranteed to get it on. Cupid's time machine, bitch. Back at the clock, Marty argues with Doc. He wants to talk about the future he's got Just as stubborn as ever, the inventor says never He doesn't want to make another time paradox So Marty writes a note, they hides a dust poop Hoping that will read it and try saving his soul Maybe this time tell the terrorists no So Marty drives back to 85 He wants to get there early to keep Doc alive But despite being able to travel the time He's still too late to stop the crime What? <laughs> he has to watch once more as Doc hits the floor after getting shot for a second time. No! Bastards! Future Doc still felt the note tear his chest, but because of Marty's note, he wore a bulletproof vest. The power of love cannot only heal time, it also helps Doc Brown get away with his crime. But that's okay, because you see, Marty's machinations to his knees. He's a pussy with holy black man who's gotten cooler and richer than they were back when. Even Marty gets a girl with a sexier face. But he has to wait for the sequel for that to take place. <laughs> Great stop! Yeah. I think we all, like, we just want to let that percolate, yeah? Turn it down, turn it down. You're gonna do yours to this, right, Margaret? You're also gonna rap, you're rapping as well? Give it up for Daniel, the fabulous rapist! A wonderful rapist. Uh, okay, that was very good, very nice. Uh, okay, so, uh, our, ne our next performer, another comedian, which I haven't seen in a while. Turn it, now you can turn it up. Sway. You don't know about sway. Uh, all right. Uh, let's just get to it. Let's just get to it. Yeah? Everybody, uh, she will be performing Sharknado. 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 Everybody, put your hands together. The lovely and funny Parker Morris. on okcupid.com. Have, have either of us ever talked about that? I'll let you guess. Is there a remote control? Or did, did Jeff stick it up his ass? I know that's where he likes to keep it. Oh! oh wait, wait. Oh. Smells like the glove. Oh! Let's hear it once more for Feminem. Let's hear it once more. 
Sharknado, which would be intensely difficult because I'm a terrible actress. Uh, I am going to rant Sharknado at you because it is the worst film of all time. Okay? I'm going to take you on a journey through the greatest worst film of all time produced for the Sci-Fi Channel because we all know they make amazing shit. Uh, I think I might be too drunk to read my script, so this might get interesting. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I shit you not when I tell you that the beginning of the movie is literally, whoop, that is not the right one. A thousand sharks swimming away from a massive fucking tornado in the middle of the ocean. This is act one, scene one. In case you were curious about what was going to happen in the fucking film. Was there going to be sharks? Was there going to be a tornado? We'll let you guess. Act one, scene two. For some fucking reason, a Japanese, I'm guessing, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of racist, so all, all Asian people are Japanese to me. A uh, businessman is on a boat in the middle of the Pacific Ocean in Mexico, and he's on this boat in order to haggle over the price of shark fins for shark fin soup. Because there's no sharks off the coast of Japan. Uh, I mean, maybe he's trying to get sharks with less radiation poisoning or some shit like that. Uh, he offers $500,000 to this extremely poorly acted Mexican dude who doesn't even look Mexican, he looks more Italian and he's speaking with the most racist Mexican accent ever. And when the Mexican man is like, no, I say to you, I want one million dollars for the whole catch. He pulls out a fucking gun. Because apparently dealing shark fins is dangerous game. Okay, it's more dangerous than the crabs, believe you. Uh, a storm is brewing. If you can't tell by this magnificent shot. Jumo, the most important thing I learned out here. We should not be afraid of the sharks. The sharks should be afraid of us. The storm worsens, and the Japanese businessman kind of disappears for like five seconds, and then begins shooting at the fucking captain, even though they're in the middle of the goddamn ocean, and the entire crew is Mexican, even though, strangely, even though they're Mexican, they all speak fucking English to each other, because racist America, ladies and gentlemen. Did I mention that a man was already attacked and eaten by a shark, and the shark literally slurped him up like a piece of spaghetti? <laughs> or like me last night. Um, and then, all of a sudden, the shark jumps out of the water and snatches the Japanese businessman. Shark death total two. Okay, then the boat gets pulled into the Sharknado, which literally appears out of nowhere, and the captain, this is the captain, is steadily chunked to bits by the shark attacks. Not even six minutes into the goddamn movie, shark attack kill three. Switch to a lovely day on Santa Monica Pier. Surf bums talk about crazy waves, something unnatural is so. Our protagonist, who is the gentleman with the surfboard, Finn Shepard. Get it? That's his fucking name. Finn Shepard is the name of the main character. Uh, he's riding some extremely fucking tiny waves because the actor doesn't actually know how to surf and clouds start brewing overhead. Uh, his Australian fuck buddy, Baz Hogan, who is played by Jason Simmons, who, who spells his name J-A-A-S-O-N because he's so fucking unique. Uh, this actor is coked out of his goddamn mind for the entirety of the fucking movie. So I would just like to point that out to you. Uh, and then he picks him up on the ski do and takes him further out to sea. Scene change to booty. Seriously. This is the scene change. Close up on the booty, motherfucker. Yeah. Hot servo girl whose work uniform is bikini and flip flops because fuck health codes uh, is working at Finn's bar. Yeah, this guy, not not the not the homosexual guy in the front, the top. Uh, he owns a bar which is run by booty girl. Uh, she's hearing a news update about a hurricane, which means. Which all, when then all of a sudden we meet the fucking dad from Home Alone, who is playing a sad old drunk bitch at a bar, and the two bond over a mutual hatred of shark. Ladies and gentlemen, this is called foreshadowing. Wow. wow. 
random intense music surfing montage where Finn and a random hot girl have a, a fucking sparring match, a surf competition, I don't know what the fuck it's called, on the calmest waters you have ever seen in your entire life. Oh, and there are random cut shots of millions of sharks swimming towards the shore. If you can't see all those little white lines in the water, those are all sharks. Okay? Uh, the dumb... Okay. The girl Finn was racing suddenly gets eaten by a shark and Finn doesn't seem too phased and instead starts yelling at people, Get out of the water! Get out of the water! And then all of a sudden, this dude gets eaten while his girlfriend is literally three feet away from him and is going, ah! runs away because she's so invested in her fucking boyfriend. Uh, two more dudes get pulled under. Uh, random other dude has his arm bitten while he's still fucking wearing a shirt. I don't know what happened. Uh, this random girl got attacked by the rare vampire shark. Uh, people on the pier run onto the beach because logic. Uh, Baz gets his leg bitten and Finn saves him by hitting a shark in the head with a surfboard because apparently that's shark kryptonite. Oh, and we learned that Baz isn't Australian, he's Tasmanian. Ah, uh, I, don't, I don't know the difference either. Uh, random guy screaming on the beach with half of his leg missing. Shark death total, eight. Fifteen minutes into the film. Back to the bar! I mean, seriously, look how fucking strung out this goddamn act is. Do you see his goddamn eyes? This is how he is for the rest of the movie. Uh, so Hot Waitress tries to fuck Finn, but he denies her, and Home Alone Dad points out that she must have daddy issues because men are fucking pigs. Uh, news update tells us that the hurricane is the worst they've ever seen, and is also miraculously moving in the opposite direction of its own winds, and that this huge bar has an occupancy limit of 30. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm close. Wow. Wow. Alright. Finn calls his ex-wife, the ghost of Tara Reid, to warn him about the storm. He wants ocean flooding, even though they live six miles away from the beach and also in Beverly goddamn hills. The storm gets bad, film, Finn closes the restaurant, and then, okay, ladies and gentlemen, these two shots literally follow each other. If you can't see, that is a shark flying into the window of the bar. Hot waitress then kills it by stabbing it in the brain with a pool cue. They then all arm themselves like it's the fucking zombie apocalypse to fight sharks when they themselves are on land. Okay. Another shark washes up and rather than walking away from it because it's fucking immobile, the waitress just squirms on the ground until Mr. McAllister hits the shark with a bar stool. Then Baz kills a shark like they did in Jaws. A hood shark knocks a ferris wheel loose and it kills a guy and destroys a hotel. <laughs> the storm subsides and Finn's bar is demolished. Everyone expresses emotion over sad music. Baz did a fresh line of coke in the porta potty. Hot waitress learns that Finn, Hot waitress learns that Finn has a daughter. They start driving the, to the ex-wife's house and with cut shots of very clearly not LA. Okay, we're gonna walk through this. That sign in the right side is in Japanese. <laughs> this cop car says Arlington. <laughs> this is, I shit you not, a scene from when the levees broke. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure this is Haiti. <laughs> Sharks begin hitting the sides of the car like bumper cars, implying that they are driving in at least hip deep water in an SUV. Oh, and we finally learn that Hot Waitress's name is Nova. <laughs> this is like an hour into the movie and we're just now learning what the hot waitress's name is. Okay, our heroes then get stuck on the freeway and make a joke about the 405 that I'm sure only Californians get. Oh, and the flooding stopped. And then starts again. And is high enough behind them for sharks to be swimming in it. And then this guy, who is in an unestablished location, gets eaten. And there are, there's no more flooding. And this lady's dog gets locked in a car. People run from nothing. Mr. McAllister gets eaten by a shark while saving the dog. <laughs> shark kill count, 10. Finn points out that the sharks will use the sewage pipes and drainage system to swim through all of LA. For once, there's 
no traffic in LA, even though there's a news broadcast telling us that they're acu uh, evacuating the coast. Our actors do an excellent job of craning their necks while pretending to look at stuff that is not there. Water floods aggressively down Rodeo Drive. Oh, oh my, oh my God, not Family Mart! <laughs> we reach Tara Reed's house. Long story short, the new guy that she's fucking is a dick. The waters burst into the house on top of a goddamn mountain, and sharks come swimming in. They eat the dick boyfriend, then they fight the shark until Nova shoots it like six times with a fucking shotgun and Baz quips, looks like it's her time of the month. <laughs> Proving again that men are the fucking worst. <laughs> they run out of the house, oh, and there's no water outside of the house, even though inside of the house was a goddamn swimming pool. Oh, and then the house collapses. They decide to go and save the sun, who apparently exists, and off on the road we go. Cue lots of fucking bullshit character development. They save a bunch of kids from a bus by repelling from a bridge because Finn randomly knows how to repel and has all the equipment in his goddamn car. <laughs> this deep sea shark was apparently trying to eat the kids even though a bunch of camera angles actually show that there is no water on the streets. You notice that? Look down, look down. There's no water on that semi. Okay. Everyone survives but the teacher who gets crushed by the O of the Hollywood sign. After saying, my mom always told me Hollywood was gonna kill me. Three tornadoes over Los Angeles with sharks stuck in them. Shark's natural enemy is apparently a helipad. There's a shark on the roof of a car. 